purpose. And so, Father, as we continue to sow, we'll continue to reap back into our lives many times over, Lord. Not that we could consume it upon our lust, but so we can continue to give more and more and more. And we thank you for that. And, Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father God, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, with the giving, I have a guy in the church. He's been coming for a little while, and uh, he's, he has some humble means. And um, he said, you know, when I first started coming in, what did he say? I was giving, like, dollars, a dollar. And he said, I just kept putting in a dollar, and um, then I would give five dollars, and now I'll give ten. He said, now, he said, now I'm up to twenties. And he just has a heart to give. And so he didn't have a lot of income, but, but what he had, he gave. He gave it with a good heart. And he's been seeing God bless him. That's scriptural, right? It's scriptural. And so it's very, very important. Um, the, heart of, the heart that we have behind things matter a lot. So tonight is part three on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And tonight we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Part one was the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all believers. And then we know that to be a fact. We've shown that in the Word of God that every believer is entitled to that gift if they want it. You know what the issue is a lot of times? People aren't hungry enough. They don't want it. They're comfortable or whatever. So that's fine. Me, I've always been thirsty. I've always been thirsty for more. And when you come to this church, you're more likely you're here because you're prone to wanting more than just the common, you know, just mundane life of going to church and going home. That's not what we're called to be, right, or called to do. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all believers. That's part one. And then part, part two is uh, the refreshing. As we pray in the Spirit, it brings about the refreshing of the Holy Ghost. And so part three will be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so tonight's message, I do have like four or five copies back there if anybody wants Wants a copy of it, you can go ahead and grab it. And if we run out, just let me know, and I'll, we'll have you another one printed off. And so salvation, when we are born again, we are born of the Spirit. We're born by the power of the Holy Spirit. Two things are needed for someone to get born again. They need to hear the Word, right? And they need the power of the Holy Spirit to, to cause them to be born again or a new creation. And then there's faith in there too, right? But God gives us that faith. You know, what, what happens to people a lot of times is they reject the Lord. They reject the gospel. And so, but when you become born again, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, and don't turn there, but Jesus said in John 14, he says, I'll give you another comforter. Now, when he uses the word another, one, another he means someone just like me. Well, who else could be just like God the Son? Then, then God the Holy Spirit, right? So I'm saying I'm giving you someone just like me, God the Holy Spirit. He'll be your counselor. He'll be your helper. He'll be your intercessor. He'll be your advocate. He'll be your strengthener. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is what produces the nine fruit of the Spirit. So the indwelling is for the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at that in uh, Galatians 5.22. We can turn to that one. And so the reason I'm starting you off this way is because if you are a born-again believer, you know the Holy Spirit. You've already been acquainted with him. He's already presented himself to you, and, and he already um, lives within you. Where people get into a ditch, as Brother Hagin taught this all the time, people get into the ditch one way or another. And so, say, people like us that are filled with the Spirit, we pray in tongues, sometimes people that are, are how we are, we'll think that someone that's born again but doesn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues, sometimes people feel like they don't have any of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's not true. They have the, that, that part of the Holy Spirit, but how many know that there's more to be gotten, right? That's why Paul asked those disciples on the, on the upper coast of Ephesus, have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? Remember when Philip was, was preaching down in Samaria? He's, he, uh, the Holy, uh, the salvation had come to them. They were rejoicing in the Spirit. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit, right? They had a lot of rejoicing. 
But it said that the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen on any of them. So they sent for Peter and John from Jerusalem. They came down, laid hands on them, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so we can see several um, times in the, in the Word of God where people are born again, but there's an experience that, that you can have even more of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus told the disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait for the power. I, I would not be a pastor without the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and the Holy Spirit, without the anointing. I wouldn't do it, wouldn't care to do it, wouldn't want to do it. Because there, are, there could be some people, they're slick talkers and they, they can talk all they want and they're, they're fine, they can entertain a crowd. I'm just not one of those people, not interested in being one of those people. I'd rather just stand up here and speak to you straight from the Spirit of God, right? Not really here to entertain you, I'm here to give you words of life. I'm here to shepherd you and here to help you. And so that you could get deeper into the presence of God. And if you're in here tonight and you're like, I'm thirsty and I just want more of God, there's got to be more. Or if you're listening on, on, through the internet, there is more. With God, there's always more. And so, but when you're born again, you're born of the Spirit. And this is the indwelling presence of, of the Holy Ghost. Look at this in uh, Galatians 5.22. He says, but the Holy Spirit, who is that? The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So the Holy Spirit produces these kinds of gifts. Have you known people that are born again believers and they have joy and they have peace and they, they have these, these fruits evident because the Holy Spirit produces that in them. That's very much needed, isn't it? In fact, I know, I know, I, it probably shouldn't be this way, but I know people that are born again and filled with the Spirit and, and, and they don't show a lot of fruit. Somewhere along the way, they've, they've, they've lost their way. When Jesus said, if you're thirsty, drink, you gotta drink every day of the Spirit. If, if you're not advancing spiritually, you're going back, Right? If someone says, well, I'm stagnant in the things of God, I'm stagnant. You're not really stagnant. You're drifting back. And I asked you, what is back there that you would want to ever drift back into? Because there's nothing out there in the world for me. I've already seen that. You know that scripture says, taste of the Lord and see that he is good? Well, I've tasted of the world and I've seen that it's no good. <laughs> right? And so... Um, uh, thankful for a little bit of a brain, too, to realize, okay, there's a difference here. And then when you get the Holy Spirit involved in your life, those things of God that used to seem mundane and seem like it wasn't uh, just thrilling or exciting, it's just because we're so flesh-driven. There's a barrier there. When you dive into the things of God, there's nothing more rewarding than, than fulfilling God's will for your life. There's nothing more rewarding than being filled with the Holy Spirit and power. That's what we're talking about tonight. The indwelling, we're thankful for that, but I'm talking about the infilling of the power. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. If you're filled with the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Amen? Those two, that's, they go hand in hand, right? Amen. Now, the are there sometimes people that they believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they come up and they ask for the, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they don't quite pray in the Spirit right away? Yeah. Why would that be? Well, the old noggin sometimes gets in the way, right? And so, but as they keep praising the Lord, as they keep worshiping God and, and keep just getting into His presence, that river will come. It will come, especially if they're expecting it and they're wanting it and they're, and they're pursuing God. Don't pursue the tongues, pursue God. Pursue the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and the tongues will, will, will flow in there. I remember uh, Leslie's uh, parents, Tyke and Cindy, and Leslie was first part of the original group too. Um, I, had, I had the whole front of the church lined up, remember that? Leslie was in that group right after I got out of Ramah. I, I mean, I had them all lined up. And I told this the other day, I was praying for this guy over here, Gary Eiser, as a matter of fact. He's, he's been a tongue talker since. You're talking over 20 years now. I was praying for him, and it was Jeannie South who comes here, little Jeannie. She starts praying in the Spirit. 
And I'm like, hey, you're supposed to wait for me. I'm supposed to lay hands on you. When the Holy Spirit falls, he falls. And it was just so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. I don't know if it's because I was new, just on the scene, and just, I don't know. But today, it doesn't seem like it's hard to get a, a, a church full of people up front to, to receive that gift. But we still get more than we did back then. We just do a lot of it privately. And, and after church, sometimes we'll, people will come. And even in the prayer line, if the Holy Spirit prompts me, I'll ask the person, like I did to Brother Jim there. And he received the baptism, right? So you're praying in the Spirit? All right, keep praying, <laughs> right? But it's an important gift. And so um, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it is the nine fruit, right? With the infilling, it's the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit that comes with the infilling. So it's, it's two groups of nine. The, the, the nine for the indwelling is the fruit of the Spirit. The nine for the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues, it is, is the nine supernatural gifts. And we're going to study these gifts because it's good news. It's real good news. Because what I'm going to read you is proof in God's Word that anything that anybody could ever, ever need that comes in from this outside world it's in the church. It's in the gifts to be able to give it to them. And the good thing about these gifts, they work as the Holy Spirit wills. But in order to get these gifts, these nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit, you have to be born again, right? And you have to be filled with the Spirit. And then that is the doorway into the supernatural things of God. This is, this is where people get healed. This is where people get delivered. This is where people get supernaturally encouraged when, when someone's speaking. It's, it's, not, it's, it's them speaking, but it's the, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit on their life during the speaking through them. And that's what it's all about. And so when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, you don't have them when you're born into the world. You must be first born into the kingdom of God through the new birth. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that. And then you have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4. But let's look at this. Let's um, look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And we'll just go down through these gifts of the Spirit. And I'll, I'll explain what each one's for. And so, please, um, like I said, this is like a, a teaching. So, um, try not to check out. <laughs> check in. Because it's, we need to know these things. Amen? And I just want to teach it. I don't want to sing and dance and and juggle something just want to teach it but it's all in the hearers amen people want to hear and the people want to know they'll get it because the holy spirit will reveal this to them but like i said there's not there's a large group of people they don't want any of it there's whole churches whole churches against the baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues. Now, I've never been one to start a war with churches. And I'm not talking to other churches. I'm just talking to you and whoever may come and, and listen. We got a lot of people to listen all over the place, all over the country, and even all over parts of the world. And so I'm teaching them. And, and we have to expose some wrong teaching in some wrong places so people can realize that, okay, what I have been taught is wrong. I sat in a church for 20, 30 years, and they never, ever mentioned the Holy Ghost, the praying in tongues. They even called it of the devil. You know what I call that? A big miss. A tragic, we'll, we'll add another word in there, a big, tragic miss. Brother Hagin used to say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Ghost is just as biblical and praying in tongues is just as biblical as salvation through Jesus Christ. It's just as biblical. It's not a foreign or alien concept. It's not something born outside of the Word of God. It comes right from the Word of God. And when you have people that know it and can explain it and people that have lived it, then we can offer it to you. And you can walk in it. Sometimes people... They're born again, and, they, and they're filled with the Spirit, but they hardly ever pray in tongues. If that's you, your river ran dry. I, I would give you a, a good suggestion. When you wake up in the morning, spend time with the Lord and pray in the Spirit. 
Get your day started off in the Spirit. And then when you pray in the Spirit, out of your innermost being, it will come. You'll feel the refreshing. You'll feel the re reviving. And then as you, when you're done praying in, spirit, in the Spirit, then you pray in English. And I believe what you pray in English is what you prayed in the Spirit. And what you're going to pray in English and what you're going to speak and what you're going to declare is the word of God. And you're going to notice a boldness and in, in a, uh, uh, just a uh, determination to just announce the promises of God. Declarations of faith. Amen. That's supernatural. Instead of praying out of your mind and just keeping everything here. The kingdom of God's here. And so that's where God speaks to you in here, right? And then through here is you renew your mind and, and, and you, you walk in the, in the spirit and walk in the will of God. And so we have to learn these things. But so he, he lists these gifts. Look at verse 7. We're in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so... The Holy Spirit gives these gifts out. These nine supernatural gifts that come when you're born again and when you're filled with the Spirit, then you can qualify for these nine supernatural gifts. The Holy Spirit, he, he distributes these gifts. Look at these gifts. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Do you see where it says by the Spirit? We can't miss these little things. The Holy Spirit. He gives it the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to another working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues. And so Look at verse 11. He says, but all these worketh that one and self same Holy Spirit, dividing to every man or woman severally as he wills. He brings the gifts out, right? Now, you must be in, you must be in the spirit for these gifts to operate. They just don't happen as you're bebopping around in the flesh, right? You, you got to be in the spirit. And, and pressing into the things of God. What better place to be doing that in praise and worship and worshiping God? Amen. And so the gifts of the Spirit do not operate in the flesh. In other words, you must wait on the unction of the Holy Spirit for the manifestation of the spiritual gifts. This is not something we do apart from God. Now, this is where a pastor comes in. Because a pastor has... It is instructed and gifted to train and to develop and to raise up people spiritually, right? And so a lot of times when people start working these gifts, they're working them in the flesh. And guess who gets to tell them? But if you love them, you tell them, right? Some weather that storm and some don't. And so you say, well, how do I know that they're doing it in the flesh? Trust me, I know. Amen? I know. And so there's a growing process here. There's a development process that needs to be, to, to be um, um, just explored even more. It takes time. Now, if somebody's operating out of the flesh, and but they feel in their mind that they're operating in one of these gifts or whatever, and if, and if I, I say, no, hold off here, I don't believe that's the Spirit of God. First of all, that's my right to do so. Amen. And if I'm wrong, then, then pray for me because I'll be, uh, I'm accountable. But uh, I'm usually not wrong. But if I instruct them that, hey, and I never do it in a negative way. I never treat anybody negative. I just try to be as much loving as I can. But they have to know that can mess everything up. It could, it could hurt people. And um, if they get mad or offended or upset or call me every name in the book, then I know, definitely know I was right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, um, 
But if they say, you know what, okay, I, I, want, I want to just get better, I want to learn, and then I can teach them. I can teach them these things. Nobody's gone through this whole spiritual walk getting it right every time. Jesus did, but he's the only one, right? Because he was perfect. And so that's why we need pastors, shepherds, and leadership. To, but we should not, the Bible says, don't despise these spiritual gifts, though. We should want these things working. I mean, if you want to see somebody get healed supernaturally, where, where it's, just, it's just there on the spot in this way, it comes from these gifts. Predominantly, when people get healed, they get healed by believing the word. They hear the word, they believe the word, they take it in by faith, and you can get healed by that way all the time. These gifts are as the Spirit wills, but if these gifts are going to operate, um, we, we need to be in unity and harmony, right? We need to teach about it, and we need to be expecting it to work. I've seen all these gifts in operation, every single one in operation, over the 45-plus years that we've been here. And so the gifts, the nine gifts are broken down into three categories, three different groups. The first group is the power gifts. They are the gifts of power that do something. Um, the next three is the gifts that reveal something, the gifts that give revelation. And then the, the third group of three is vocal gifts that it mentions. So we're just going to go down through these gifts and so you get a little understanding on it. So the first gift is the gift of special faith. And so the Amplified Bible says, to another wonder-working faith. It's a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit, whereby a believer is empowered with special faith or wonder-working faith. And it is beyond simple saving faith. It is a supernatural gift of faith beyond the, 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 the saving faith, the faith that you believe to be saved with. You know who had that gift? I believe Smith Wigglesworth. He said that he was praying to God one day with his faith, and down from heaven came a whole other faith. When you raise 19 people from the dead, that's, that's something. And, but I've, I've known people that have, they, they, they might not operate in these gifts all times, but these gifts are available to us wherever we're at. There was a man, um, a doctor that was a Christian, and there was a guy in the, um, uh, he was in the hospital, and he, he was already declared dead, and um, just even, even had a toe tag already. So he just went in there to verify it, and he was walking out of the room, and the Lord said, pray for him. He's dead. And he said, well, Lord, he's already dead. He said, pray for him. And so he just went back. All he did was pray for you to be healed and to be to be raised up in the name of Jesus. That guy um, sat straight up. This is the doctor telling this story. So if you're willing, those gifts will be there. Whatever the world needs, it'll be there if you're a willing participant. Amen? And so that doctor could have said, well, I'm not going to pray for that person. I just don't feel like it. It's, it's stupid. Well, then that gift would have went unused, Right? And so we have to be a willing participant in all of this. And so the next gift, the next power gift is the working of miracles. It's a miracle, is a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature, a temporary suspension to the accustomed order, or an interruption in the system of nature as we know it, operated by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not something of this natural capability in this world. You could say that the mir it was a miracle when, when Moses held out the staff and the Red Sea parted, right? That went against, that went against all the laws of nature. It's, it's a miracle when a lot, a lot of times these gifts will work. Both of these gifts have to be in play for something. Like for something, if somebody died of an illness or an injury, then you got the, soup, the gift of uh, working in miracles. You got the gift of healing working at the same time. You know, they got... The, they will work at the same time, according to Brother Hagen. And then the next one is the gifts of healings, manifestations for the supernatural healing of sickness and disease without any source or means. Without any natural source or means, it's a supernatural, from above, healing power. Is it listed in there for the church? Amen. 
We should not only know about these gifts, we should pray and expect for these gifts to be, be uh, just happening in, in, in larger measures. And so the next gift, the next three is the three gifts that reveal something. And the first one is the word of wisdom. Now, the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose and plan in the mind and will of God, and it always speaks to the future. So let me read that again. It's a supernatural revelation, right? Talking about a word of wisdom by the Spirit of God, and it's concerning the divine purpose and plan that's in the mind and will of God, and it always speaks to the future. In the Old Testament, the prophets spoke to the future, right? That's what this gift does in, in the New Testament in the church. The word of wisdom will speak to the future about the plans and purposes of God for the future. That's a word of wisdom. We need that one in the body of Christ. We need it. Right? So the word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning certain facts in the mind of God. Facts about people, places, or things in the past or present. Let me read that again. And like I said, I do have copies back there if you want to just um, look, look at this further. So a word of knowledge is, is the second revelation gift that we're talking about. And so it is, is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God. It all comes from the Holy Spirit, right? And he brings knowledge about facts in the mind of God, but these facts are about people, places, or things in the past or present. And so you could um, have someone with, with the uh, word of knowledge um, ministering, and we've ministered in that, where we just know by the Holy Spirit when we're ministering to someone that, that, that they, they, they went through a lot of hardship. You can just see it clearly. And when you speak it to them, it breaks them down every time. Amen? We don't know it in our own way. We know it by the Spirit of God. When we were um, at Columbia, when we went to Bogota, Columbia, which I hope we get back someday, we would go into churches. That's what we would do. We would support local churches. And we were in this one wonderful church, and there was a man and woman in front of us. And this is when Leslie and I went down for the first time. We were just not married very long. And the woman turns around to us, and, and I, I believe... Um, she gave us a word of wisdom because she said, there's, I see just, I see children. And he's talking to Leslie, Sister Leslie. I see children coming here from the Lord. It's some, and, and she's speaking along that lines. And we're thinking, we ain't having no more babies now. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, but don't you know, she saw 20 years down the road, all these children that Sister Leslie deals with, all these little three and four-year-olds that come in every morning and give her hugs and give her high fives and all that precious ministry that she's in, that woman saw it. She, was, she wasn't a minister. She wasn't a famous person. She's just a person in the church that the Holy Spirit dropped that on her. It's a good deal, right? And so, so remember, now the word of wisdom, it speaks to the, it speaks to the uh, future, where you might think of prophecy in the Old Testament. Um, word of knowledge is, is facts about people, places, or things in the past or, or present. And so, um, Brother Hagen was in a, what was he at? Like, see why, see why you have to be careful with these gifts? Because you know how the mind can work. People can get, they happen as you're in the spirit. And so a modern day prophet, too, also, Brother Hagin would say, would be someone that operates regularly in three of these gifts, three of these gifts regularly, which he did. And so he, he was a modern day prophet that um, had a high call on his life that way. But he was in a church and, and um, the uh, piano player, um, the Lord gave... Uh, him a word of knowledge about where she was before the the service started and where she was wasn't a good place to be she wasn't doing good things i'm not gonna give the devil any glory 
And that, that was a uh, word of knowledge. And so he said, she's going to have to go down here. She's going to have to be sat down. <laughs> and uh, not, what, kicked out of the church and, and blackballed and forever? No. When people are sat down, they're sat down to, to restore them. We're not to shoot our wounded, right? And so, but she needed to come down because she had things, she got side, sidetracked. When the Holy Spirit tells you people about something about people, it's never to harm them, is it? That's what the world does. Religious people do that. Never to harm them. It's to help them. It's to rescue them. It's to deliver them out of the captivity that they're in. And you've got to have a, a good-hearted pastor that will do that. And you've got to have a good-hearted um, board and, and elders of the church to know that our job isn't to, isn't to throw people out. Our job is to restore them and to heal them up. But he, he had that word of knowledge there. And so um, the next gift that reveals something is the discerning of spirits. And this gives supernatural insight into the spiritual world. To discern or to perceive by seeing or hearing, seeing or hearing in the realm of the spirits. It deals with the spirits that exist in the spirit realm, whether they are divine, satanic, or human. So it's the ability to hear or see into the spiritual world. How many know that the spiritual world is more real than this world? If you could see into the spiritual, if you had the discerning of spirits operating right now, you could see right now there are angels walking behind me. There are angels in this place. We had a young man see them one day. He, he said to his parents, he said, do you guys see what I see? And they're like, well, what are you talking about? He says, I see angels walking back and forth on the stage behind Pastor John. So that you, you see into that realm. That's, that's good spirits, bad spirits, and even human spirits. You can see what's, what's in a, a human spirit with that gift. But that's a tricky one. Because some people think that's the gift of suspicion. You know? <laughs> and... Uh, my dad was preaching on this one time, and he said, don't you know, I preached on this, and a lady got up out of her, out of her chair af after he was done and went up to the lady sitting up front, and she said, I got a word from the Lord that that hair cut and that color is not for you. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> Did she mean well? Yeah. Brother Hagin used to say, God bless her darling little hearts and her stupid little heads. But I ain't saying that. <laughs> but I, I, I really enjoy it. Like I said, I, I don't mind talking to people and helping people. But I can only help them as much as they, they allow me to. Right? You know, Jesus can only help whoever would allow him to also. And so... Um, then the next category is the three gifts that utter or say something. They're the vocal gifts. And it's the diverse kinds of tongues, um, supernatural utterances by the Holy Spirit and languages never learned by the speaker, nor understood by the speaker, nor necessarily understood by the hearer. So this is the, 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 the tongues or the gift of tongues. This is not, this is, this is not, talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues. That personal gift, that's for everyone, right? This is talking about one of the nine supernatural gifts, the gifts of tongues, and that is used in the church as the Holy Spirit wills. And so, not understood by the hearer or the speaker, nor necessarily understood by the hearer. It needs to be revealed and interpreted. I know in the book of Acts, when they went out on the street there, the first initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they heard them speaking in their own native language. It did manifest that way. But primarily, it's going to be no one really knows what's being said. It's a heavenly language. It's the gift of tongues. And it needs to be an interpreter. That gift does, right? And so there was a time, I think it was Creflo Dollar, said he was in a church service, and he, he gave a tongue. And um, he said that... Uh, um, when he was done, the, uh, somebody interpreted, and there was a, a lady from China in the church, and she went up to Creflo's, I think it was Creflo's mom or something, and said, when did Creflo, Creflo learn Chinese? Because she said he spoke it perfectly, perfectly, and she heard it. 
And so I'm not saying it can't, but predominantly, it's going to be not one of your languages you have on the earth. Predominantly, it's going to be a heavenly language, a spiritual language that needs an interpreter. Now, sometimes when people come in, they get a little hung up because they know that. They don't know much about tongues, but they know that when it's in the church, you have to be an interpreter. But sometimes they'll hear somebody speaking in their own personal prayer language. And then they'll get a little bit antsy because nobody interpreted it. Well, when we say let's praise God and let's worship God, a lot of people are going to pray in their prayer language. That's how they praise God. So you're going to hear, hear a personal prayer language. Just know that that's them worshiping God in their prayer language. Amen? And it's not a bad thing, is it? But it's no need for an interpretation because it's not that gift. But, it, but usually this gift happens as we're praising and worshiping God. Then everything will get quiet. And it just sort of like stay still a little bit. And then by the unction of the Holy Spirit, somebody will, will speak in, in tongues. And then another person will interpret it. We've had that happen many times. Many times. And so, um, but you can see it's, it's biblical, right? It's, it's, does your electronic device or the, your, the book you have, does it say B-I-B-L-E? Bible, <laughs> right? It, it's the Bible. And so, but when people don't understand things, sometimes they just dismiss it. If you dismiss this, it's a big, big miss, right? All of the churches that Paul wrote to, all of them were spirit-filled. They were. You can tell his writings. They were all spirit-filled. They were all praying in tongues. They were, it's just over time that has eroded, and then you get man-made teachings in there, and, and you get man-made ways, and, and now it's predominantly in our area, we're a minority. We're a minority. And people are against it even. When I first got here, like I said, I was gung-ho on this gift. Maybe I didn't get a lot of people up front anymore because I got them all filled. So the one they left the pick from. <laughs> but I, I, met, I saw a friend of mine down on Broad Street. I was driving through there. and It was like a construction. So I was just driving slow and he saw me. This is a guy from high school. He said, hey, I heard you took over your dad's church. I said, yeah, I'm out there. Come on out and see. He said, oh, yeah, I'll be out. I'll be out. And I started driving away, and he stops me. And he says, hey, wait a minute. You're not one of those churches that pray in tongues, are you? I said, yeah, we believe in those gifts. I ain't seen him since. It's been over 20 years. You know, when we, when we started the church, there's a lot that we didn't know. And there's a lot of good organizations that help Christian churches to get established. And, and so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And they can help us just go through all the regulations. And there was one organization. They're good people. I'm not like saying that they're not saved. They're not even good people. They just don't have any understanding. And, and, and the guy says, um, the head guy says, hey, um, you, can't, you can't join our organization. He said, we, I, I was on your website. We believe everything that you believe except for those tongues. And so we were blackballed or blacklisted. We, could, we, couldn't, we couldn't join that organization because of tongues. It's just, it's just like, um, okay. He said, but we'll help you on the side. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we ever did get any help from him. And uh, is, it's about as biblical as it gets, these gifts. Is it not? And so that's the tongues. And then the next, the second vocal gift is the interpretation of tongues. The purpose of the gift of interpretation of tongues is to render the gifts of tongues understandable to the hearers so that the whole church congregation, as well as the ones who gave the utterance in an unknown tongue, may know what had been said and may be, and may be edified thereby. And so when, when their gift of tongues comes, it is to edify the church. It's to lift the church. That's what the purpose is. It's not, I got, a I got the interpretation, and you're all going to die. You're doomed. You know, it's not what the purpose of the, of the interpretation of the tongues is. It's the edify. So if it ain't edifying, 
it ain't from the Lord. Right? It's somebody getting in their own head. And, and uh, when I, like I said, when I first got here, I taught on this a lot. Somebody must have got word on it because I got a phone call in my office one day. <laughs> and uh, I picked it up. Hey, Freedom of Christ Church, how you doing? And he's like, are you preaching on tongues over there? I said, yeah. He said, well, they ain't nothing. That, that's all. It's not mentioned in the Bible. The only place it's mentioned is in the book of Corinth, and they were all crazy Christians anyway. And, and he hangs up on me. And I was being polite and listening, thinking that I was going to get an opportunity, you know, two-way conversation. I thought, man, I know I'm on the right track now. <laughs> I made the devil mad. I got people calling me that I don't even know. Uh, let's go. <laughs> let's keep it going. Right? And so, you know, and the interesting thing, too, about the interpretation of the tongues, when, when someone brings the interpretation of the tongues, it's, it's, I love it. Because they will bring the interpretation of tongues how they normally speak. It won't be as if all of a sudden they got a, uh, a doctorate in English speaking and, and uh, a degree or whatever. And O oh, thee thou people. <laughs> I had, we had a wonderful guy. He was just a country guy. He gave interpretation one day and it was like, you and guys, <laughs> you know, he was just like, that's Pennsylvania talk, right? You and guys, you know, it just was all him. Why? That's how he talks. It's the unction of the Holy Spirit. So I'll give you the words and you say it how you say it. It's, there's not like um, any of that other stuff in there, right? And so now the third um, gift that says something is the simple gift of prophecy. Now that simple gift of prophecy is words of edification, exhortation, and comfort supernaturally by the Spirit of God. It's not just because you feel good and you want to say something nice. Now this is a this is supernatural gift, just like the other ones. And but there's power in it, edification, exhortation, and comfort. So the tongues and speaking in tongues literally equal that gift. So that gift is, 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 if you want to say, greater because it takes the other two to equal that. So when you get the tongues, interpretation, you're getting edification, exhortation. It came through the two gifts, though. This gift is supernaturally brought forth by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of ministers that are spirit-filled will operate in this gift through the, throughout their sermon. Throughout their sermon. And like I said, we've been having a lot of new people come and they're, they're liking it. They're liking the word. And, and what they end up saying is, Pastor John was talking right to me. Well, I believe that, that would be that, that uh, simple gift of prophecy. I believe it would be edification, exhortation, and comfort using the word and by, by, by administering under the pulpit ministry, getting into their heart. Sometimes I see people, husband and wives, I see them give each other the elbow and say what'd you say about me <laughs> well honestly they get mad we have people get they'll call and say well how'd he know that and, and sister Leslie will say he's just telling you from the Holy Spirit he don't know anything he knows nothing <laughs> so if you get hit you get hit right yep. what's wrong with a little bit of conviction amen I want to feel conviction I want to feel it if I miss it. I want to feel it if I'm going the wrong way. I want to feel it if I could do better. Because if I don't feel those things, it either means that I've arrived and I've gotten perfect, but that ain't happening, or it means my heart has gotten hardened. And I don't want that either. Amen? So until Jesus comes back, look for moments of conviction. I'm not talking about condemnation now. Condemnation is separation from God. That's been solved. But your spirit has to continually commune and continually fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit and through the word. And when you go outside the word and your speech and your actions and you continually do it, you're hardening your heart. 
And people might say, well, I, I've been doing these things and I don't feel any different. I'm prospering in my life, in my business. Everything's prospering. No, but what you don't realize is you've hardened your heart little by little over time. And the Bible says above all else, you've got to guard your heart. Because that's where the love comes from. That's where the faith comes from. That's where the kingdom of God is. And trust me, I see people all the time with hardened hearts. Hardened hearts. They go through the motion, but they haven't watched their heart. And it's not a good place to be, right? And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So people will usually let you know right pretty much where they're at spiritually by the words that they're saying. And so I watch my words because that's the number one way to guard your heart. And you, when, it, when you guard something, that means you're like paying attention to it, right? So that means if you're getting in an argument and you feel this stuff coming up in you, do you just say it? Say, well, I'm, I'm Irish and we speak our mind <laughs> or whatever. We're hot-headed people. Well, you can go ahead and be that way, but I guarantee you one thing, your heart's going to be hardened. And, and it's not going to, it's not going to, you're not going to grow spiritually. You might know more scriptures. You might check another church service off on your belt. And you might have listened to another five-part CD series or whatever. But if you aren't guarding your heart, it's, it's nothing. Amen? That's what 1 Corinthians 13 says. Right in the middle of speaking about the spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, Paul puts in by the Holy Spirit the love chapter. And he says, if I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me what? Nothing. If I give all my money to the poor and don't have love, it profits me nothing. If I could speak with the tongues of angels and have all these spiritual gifts, if I have not love, it profits me nothing. What's he talking about? Spiritually, it profits you nothing. You're not growing in your spirit. You're, you're hardening your spirit. You're hardening your heart. That's why I really believe pastors have to be are usually called to be soft and to be sensitive and to be patient and to be long-suffering because you got to work with people and you got to hang in there with them because they're precious and you don't throw people out because they're they're having hard times right and so but yeah guard your heart as much as you know above all else it says and so the simple gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a, in, a, in a known tongue. A known tongue. Um, so with the simple gift of prophecy, in closing here, I've got five minutes, there's no revelation with that. It should not be confused with the prophetic utterance that may come forth in the prophetic ministry um, or the foretelling, foretelling of something that's going to happen. It's more of a foretelling. See what I mean? So I know it says prophecy, but it's a simple gift of prophecy. It's not a, a foretelling or telling the future. That, that's what the word of wisdom is, right? It, it, it is a foretelling. It is edification, exhortation, and comfort. Not because you feel good and you want to say something nice, because you should do that. You should edify people. This is supernaturally gifted by the Holy Spirit. It's just as supernatural as the other gifts, is it not? And that is the lift people. And so, look over there at 1 Corinthians 14, 3. Just in closing, I just want to read a couple of scriptures that, that focuses a little bit on the prophecy part. Once again, the prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known tongue. It says, But he that prophesies speaketh unto men edification, exhortation and comfort 1st Corinthians 14 3 now uh, there was a, um, a family that a husband and wife that came in here a few years ago for a little while and then we just weren't their their cup of tea some people come in and they say where you been all my life other people are like well no but other people they'll they'll come in and they'll try it but they're so trained and so their thought patterns are just in one way. It's hard for them sometimes. And um, 
they told me, they told me uh, one time after service, in our old church, when, when the um, pastor was done, he would say, does anyone have a word from the Lord? Well, why would you do that? You're asking for it. Because somebody's going to have a word, and it ain't going to be from the Spirit. Right? And so, sure enough, they would get these people pop up. Oh, the Lord told me, thus say this, and thus say that, and then this and that, and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, why would you open up that kind of confusion in your church? They happen as you're in the Spirit. Not because you're asking them if they have something. Right? And so, there's a lot of, um, and this is all what Paul was talking about to this, to this church of Corinth. He's just trying to structure them, right? He's just trying to get them to have some, some order, order about things. And um, so look at 1 Corinthians 14.5. He says, I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. Now, let me just stop there. He said that he, he wants them all to speak with tongues. You think if um, that stands true today? He said, I want you all to speak with tongues. Right? Right? But rather, he said that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive the edifying. So that's what we're talking about. So when you pray in tongues, and God uses you in that gift, you are to pray that you interpret, that you move on. Sometimes in churches you get people, they, like I said, you've got to train them. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just... Because they're God, that God loves them, and they're trying, they're just doing their best. But they, 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 they become the official tongue talker of the church, and it just seems like they're all always the one. And, and I remember my dad telling this guy one time. He said, "Okay, you spoke in tongues. You, you had the gift of tongues going. Now the Bible says, pray that you would interpret. And so don't operate in that, and pray that you would interpret. That's perfectly fine, isn't it? That's perfectly fine." Like I said, you'll see how far people are into the spirit when you get into their business like that. One, one day I was uh, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, because I know when he's there. And right in the middle of this full-blown speaking under the Holy Spirit, saying some good stuff. I mean, the Holy Spirit was nailing it. The lady in the back starts praying in tongues. And, and afterwards, I, I didn't even acknowledge it, but afterwards I said, Sister, that, that wasn't the Lord. And I said, and she said, well, I think it was. I said, okay. I don't see why the Holy Spirit would interrupt himself, though. Would he? I was speaking through the pastor, and so one of us was wrong then. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the Holy Spirit was trying to correct me. No, I don't think so. But, but she didn't take it well. But I said it lovingly, I said it kind, I said it the best I could, and just went elsewhere. So maybe the, the next pastor will, will can do better, right? Um, look at uh, 1 Corinthians 14.1. It says, follow after love, or pursue love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy right three things right there big things when you're seeking when you're in the spirit of things the first thing that you're doing is pursuing love not under the inspiration of the flesh right not filled with carnality you're pursuing love because without love you don't have anything and love lifts everybody up around you Love forgives, doesn't it? And then it says, do what? Go ahead and desire spiritual gifts. Desire to be used, because when you're used of these gifts, is it a gift for you, just for your benefit? Anybody that has a gift in here, it's for the benefit of everybody in here. It's for the benefit of the church. And I want to tell you, like I said, this is, works with everybody. I know I'm running a little bit over, but i got to tell you this. When we were in Bogota, we were talking to a uh, couple that 
um, hadn't been in church for like a year. And Sister Darlene was there and Brother Jay was there. And, and they, they looked a little bit like they just um, weren't, weren't 100% right with us. You know, they weren't mad at us, but they just was giving off a vibe. And I, I didn't have the word for them. You know who did? Sister Darlene. She's, remember that sister? She spoke to their life. She, she was given a word of knowledge. And she spoke right into them. And it, and it, it healed them. Healed their bodies. Healed, healed their emotions and healed their mind. And, and broke that bondage. And they started going to church. And here it was. They, they, they were staying out of church because they started living together. And they knew it wasn't right. And so they were staying out of church. Guess who was invited to their wedding? Brother Jay and Sister Darlene <laughs> was invited to their wedding. I was in the room, but we all know I ain't the great somebody. I don't want to be. I want all these gifts to be in everybody. You know what a pastor does? Helps recognize gifts and develops them. Right? That's, that's the main job of a pastor, to raise people up spiritually, recognize these gifts, help develop them so they can use them in the body. That's what, it's, that's what the best part is. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 12. It says, Even so, for as much as you are zealous for spiritual gift, gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. Look at verse 39. He's finishing up here his... Uh, his instructions on this part. He says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. Let me just stop there. What prophecy is he talking about? The simple gift of prophecy, edification, exhortation, and comfort of the church, right? He says, covet that. And look what he says. And forbid not to speak with tongues in the church. Is what he's talking about, right? But let all things be done in decency and in order. So if Paul said specifically, do not forbid the speaking of tongues in the church. Why is, why is it happening? Amen? It's happening a lot. But we will do what the word says. Amen? But is there decency and order? Yeah. Amen? But the main thing that we're talking about here is you go ahead and get filled with the Spirit. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost and you get your own prayer language and you just have your, your good old time get, getting away with the Lord. Did you ever get overwhelmed with life and get bogged down? I remember there was, there was a old commercial by Southwest Airlines. And it was like, you want, to, you want to get away. Anybody remember that? And in that commercial, there's a woman, she's on a date with this guy, and she's, she goes into his apartment, and she goes into, uses his restroom, bathroom, and, and she starts snooping around in his, his uh, cabinet, medicine cabinet. And the whole thing falls down. Glass everywhere, right into the sink. And then it says, you want to get away? <laughs> Southwest Airline. You want to get away from this stuff in this world? Go ahead and get in the spirit. Go ahead and say, I'll see you guys in about an hour. I'm going to go pray in the spirit. I'm going to go worship God. And then as I come out of the spirit, I'm going to be a warrior. I'm going to be more than a conqueror. I'm going to come out of praying in the spirit with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God coming off of my mouth. And I'm going to make declarations of faith that will move the armies of heaven on my behalf and every demonic spirit can't even stand a chance when you speak like that amen that's all I have would you rise please and so in closing my attempt here is not to um, down other churches my attempt is to help people who are hearing me because I believe that if they're hearing me, then um, it's God ordained, right? And sometimes you have to draw a contrast to open people's minds and to help them get out of something if, if they're in something that's not biblical, right? 
But these churches, they all, if they're believers, they belong to God. And God says, do not judge another man's servant. And I'm not doing that. They, they, they can, they're worked out their own salvation with the Lord. Amen. But at the same time, people need to hear uh, uh, a reasoning and a, and a biblical perspective on the other side if they've been sitting in the wrong, right? But so we're not trying to fight, start fights. We're just trying to set people free. Let's pray. Father, we come to the name of Jesus and, and I thank you, Lord, for these wonderful people that came out tonight. I thank you, Lord, that the word of God is dwelling richly in their hearts. I thank you, Lord God, that they are more than overcomers. I thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.